Here's a problem from chapter 15 of Bach, Velman, and DeVoe. They just entitle it Drunks. It's about um, what happens at a sobriety checkpoint. So they say police often set up sobriety checkpoints, and if the officer does not suspect a problem with the driver, uh, the driver is released to go on their way. Otherwise, drivers are detained for a, breath a breathalyzer test, which will determine whether or not they are arrested. The police say that based on the brief initial stop, trained officers can make the right decision 80% of the time. So that's our first important piece of data. And uh, suppose the police op operate a sobriety checkpoint after 9 p.m. on a Saturday night when traffic safety experts suspect that about 12% of drivers have been drinking. So that's we're going to just assume that 12% of the drivers are actually drinking. Okay, so we want the answers to some interesting questions. This is a classic uh, case of uh, some sort of screening test, and we want to get things like false positive and false negative rates along with true positives and true negatives. And that amounts to reversing the conditioning. Um, here's some very explicit questions. You're stopped at the checkpoint and have not been drinking. What's the probability that you are detained for the breathalyzer? What's the probability that any given driver will be detained? What's the probability that the driver who is detained has actually been drinking? What's the probability that the driver who was released had actually been drinking? Okay. So um, a lot of these problems are about reversing the conditioning because this is about given that the person is drinking or not drinking, what's the, what's the decision? This is um, some data about who's drinking and who's not drinking. But what we want is things like um, part C, is it given that you were detained, what's the probability that you're actually drinking? So that's uh, reversing the conditioning that's kind of present in the, in the problem. So of course the first thing to do is to draw a tree diagram to get all the numbers on in a uh, pictorial format, and it, that much makes it so much easier. Okay, so the first thing is, let's fill this in. This is just um, drinking, and then this is not drinking. The reason those are the first stages of the tree is because we've got um, the probability. We do know the probability of that drinking versus not drinking. So the probability of drinking is 0.12. And uh, I need a little more room there, don't I? Um, and the probability of not drinking, whoa, let's not erase that, is 0.88. Okay. So those, we just have the probabilities. Now, let's say this is detained, and then this is not detained. And then similarly here, given that you're not drinking, we wanted those probabilities as well. And what do we know about that? Okay, well, we know that the officers make the correct decision 80% of the time. And this is kind of a simplistic thing. It doesn't seem to depend on whether you're drinking or not drinking. It's still 80% correct. So if you're drinking, obviously they want to detain you. And so the probability there is supposed to be, given that you're drinking, there's an 80% chance that they'll detain you. And of course, this has to be the complementary probability, just 1 minus that 0.20. Okay? Now, given that you're not drinking, the claim is that there's only a 20% probability that you're, you're going to detain you for the breathalyzer test. And then, of course, there's an 80% probability that you're not going to be detained. Okay. So that answers directly a lot of questions. Like, what's the probability, given that you're not drinking, that you'll be detained? Um, but the interesting ones are about reversing the conditioning. Okay, so let's see if we can answer some of these in an easy way. You were stopped at the checkpoint and have not been drinking. Okay, you're definitely in this branch. What's the probability that given that you're not drinking that you were detained for a breathalyzer? That's exactly this 20%. Okay, so this is probability of detained given not drinking and that's one of the things directly on the tree diagram, which is 0.2 or 20%. Let's say 20%. Okay. So what about B? What's the probability that any given driver will be detained? Okay, so that's an absolute probability, but it's not one of the absolute probabilities that you're given um, at the first level of the tree diagram. We've got to do that by adding up a couple of probabilities. So there's two situations on this tree that, that amount to detained. It's drinking and detained and it's not drinking and detained. Okay, 
So this is probability of detained, period, is the probability of detained and drinking plus the probability of detained, whoops, huh, of detained and not drinking. And that's really not, let's see, there we go. Not drinking, I still I need to rescue my, my parentheses. Sorry about that. OK. OK, now to get an and, that's the, the general probability rule, which is this probability of not drinking times the conditional probability, or say here, the, the conditional probability. So that's going to be the 0.88. 88% of the people coming through are not drinking, but 20% of those get detained. So that amounts to part of the reason that you could be could, that you're going to get people detained, plus the reason you want, which is 0.12, the 12% of people who are drinking, times the 80% of those are actually getting detained. So it's just you take how many people are in each category, and then what percentage of each of those categories ends up detained. It's fancier to talk about it in terms of, of um, probability rules, but it really is fairly straightforward. You have two groups, and in each group you know what percentage of each group has a certain condition detained, and you just add those up. Okay, and so that's going to be 0.176 um, plus 0.096 trying to do it in my head here. I don't know if that's a great idea. Uh, probably not. Um, 0.282, I think. No, 272. Just kidding. OK. So about 27%. 27.2%. So over a quarter of the people are actually stopped, even though less than an eighth of the people are actually drinking. Well, OK. Um, that's not shocking, because uh, they're not, they don't know right off the bat exactly uh, perfectly whether you're drinking or not. So it's not so, uh, it's not so disturbing at this point. Okay, what's the probability that a driver who is detained has actually been drinking? That's where we re reverse the conditioning. We need to know, given that you're detained, what's the probability that you're actually um, drinking and detained? Okay, so we need to know the probability of uh, drinking meh, given detained, well, the definition of conditional probability is that's the probability of drinking and detained divided by uh, the probability of detained. And the nice thing is, we just got the probability of detained. Aha! We knew that would be useful for something, right? Okay. So the probability of drinking and detained is up here. Whenever you have um, an and on a tree diagram, you're just multiplying these probabilities because you're taking the 12% of the people who are drinking and then the 80% of those that are drinking and detained. Okay. So that's going to be 0 0.80 times 0 0.12. And then the probability of detained was a little uh, tricky to get, but we've got it already. The total detained. And that's the 0 0.272. Okay. And I'll let the calculator do this. OK, or the computer. OK, so 0.353, or in other words, 35.3%. OK, so that's interesting. Um, if you're detained, the probability that you're actually drinking is only about over a third. So the probability that you weren't uh, drinking, even though you were detained, is almost 2 thirds. That's a big. Uh, false positive rate, but it's okay for an initial screening. They're not arresting you. They're not hassling you too much. They just say they want you to take a test. Um, and so it's okay that this isn't near 100%. Ideally, it would be near 100%. If you're detained, it'd be nice to know, yeah, they detained you for a reason. You really were drinking. But because the probability that you're actually drinking is pretty low, and this this false this false positive rate is 20%, it's more likely, if you look here, you can see that as well. The bulk of the people who were um, detained is actually the detained and not drinking. That's this part, the 88% and 20. That's the 0.176. The bulk of the people who are detained are the folks who are just gotten because 
the tw this 20% rate of detaining people who are not drinking. And about half of the, those folks, actually, um, are in the category you'd like to be detained, the ones that are drinking. Okay, So that's an interesting thing. Um, and that happens a lot. Whenever you have something that has an imprecise screening test for something that's not incredibly likely, like this 12%, you're going to get a lot of false positives. Okay, D, the last one, what's the probability that a driver who was released had actually been drinking? Ah, okay, so that's a false negative. Uh, we'd like to know, and that's real, we'd really like those people not to be released because that's the whole point of the checkpoint. So we'd like this to be a small number. Okay, so this is probability of drinking given released. Uh, it doesn't like that. It doesn't like having that in math mode for various reasons. I'll just put it out of math mode. Okay, so this is going to be very like this one. I'll just copy it. Okay, but then this is actually released. Still didn't like math mode there. I should have realized that. And we might think we'd have to redo a lot of work here, but it's not too bad. Because drinking and release, that's not hard. It's just multiplying two numbers. That's drinking and, and not detained, released. So that's 0.12 times 0.20. OK? And then the probability of released in general, well, if we hadn't done the work we did before, we would have to do this kind of, of somewhat complicated thing. But we know the probability of detained. There's only two options. You're the detained or released. So we can just use the complement principle. Probably that you're released is just 1 minus this. And so that's 0 0.728. OK. And now we can just let the computer do that. Oh, it, it uses scientific notation. Let's, we don't need that. 033, let's say, which is 3.3%. OK. We'd like this to be 0, of course, because these are the drunks who are just let back on the road. Uh, without even giving a, being given a breathalyzer, but it's nothing's perfect. You're not going to be able to have this be zero. Um, so that's the the rate of false negatives that you get in this situation. Um, that about one out of thirty people is going to be released, even though they've been drinking. Um, or sorry, one out of thirty one out of thirty of the released people has been drinking. So that's you've we've always got to be careful what you say, how you say it. If you've got a conditional probability, try to make sure you know. You're making it, staying in it, saying it in a clear enough way to say what the condition is and then what the probability is that you're given that condition.